What's up guys, my name's Gamer360 Sports, giving you guys some more rules to the show with Oscar Bryant and the Chicago Cubs. This episode we continue on the series, starting off Season 2. And before you guys ask why I said Chicago Cubs, he's been called up to spring training for 2014. I know, right? A 19-year-old in spring training that could come off the bench next season. I know, right? He's supposed to be starting off in AAA and he's not even ready to become a spring training player just yet. He's still 68 overall, but you know, Chicago still called him up for one reason only. They lost Alfonso Soriano, which means this team no longer has a star left fielder. They did pick up Juan Carlos Stanton to play right field and put Solaire at left field, but right now, the Chicago Cubs are starting off with four rookies in the starting lineup and another two off the bench, which means he could be starting in the majors at a very young age to start off his career. But let me tell you, it wouldn't be starting because right now, the Solaire right now is like 70 overall. The player playing center field is 75 overall. Right now, I have to say this. It is way too early to call up Oscar Bryant. I hope right now that he doesn't go up to the majors, but let me tell you, Oscar Bryant, as he's pinch hitting throughout the spring training, as you're seeing every single fielding at bat, every single batting practice, everything like that, right now Oscar Bryant, you can tell, does not even have a hit indicator that he can actually hit a ball with. His first career spring train at bats, first three I should say, were all ground outs. The fourth right here, and an 11 to 1 route in the bottom of the seven was his first hit. Also, could have been an error at the shortstop, would bobble the ball. But let me tell you, this is way too early to call up a 19 year old to the major leagues, skipping Triple A, who only hit 257 with a bunch of home runs. Not even 20 home runs, for crying out loud, with two different clubs. But right now, Oscar Bryant wants to prove he can actually at least play a little bit in the majors, but not that much. He's not the best player in the world. You can tell right now he's flying out almost every single time. A lot of times, the he's not even hitting any balls really hard in any of these games. Right now, this is just for experience, and you guys know management. In this game, you either get called up too early or called up too late. Most likely, Oscar Bryant gets called up too early. But anyway, let's focus on the gameplay as Oscar Bryant would hit his hardest ball of spring training right here, right into the glove of the catcher. Which means that is not a home run, and once again, he is struggling. Overall, I think in the first 10 at-bats, he went 1 for 10 in spring training to start off, and he was striking out too many times because, you know, he wasn't ready for the major league pitching, which wasn't giving him any pitches in the strike zone. Well, let me tell you, this would be one of the best opportunities to bring in a run, but yeah, that's going to be tagged out at home. And you can tell Oscar Bryant that this is going on right in the middle of March right here, here in the Captus League, and he's already struck out four, five, six, seven times already. No, anyway, here is some point discipline right here to start off more batting practice. It's a pretty easy one. All you have to say is hit a ball in the strike zone, hit it fair, hit it deep, and you're basically good because this was the easiest drill. Most of the pitches came right down directly center and none of them went left, right, up, down, anywhere in these counts because it was the easiest thing possible, right? It's just a batting practice where you can get anything going and most of them are right down the center of the plate just a little bit off here and there overall if you're looking for point discipline this is the easiest drill because it can bump up your stats in spring training pretty easily but look at this one it just falls short of the warning track right there and now four out of ten let me tell you i'm going to change up topics because right now i don't want you guys saying i'm absolutely bored on my mind but anyway Here's some couple things right now for the All-Star break. It just ended off, let me tell you, I was enjoying the All-Star break. Jonas Cespedes creamed a bunch of home runs in the home run derby against Bryce Harper. Those two are the future home run stars in the major leagues. Cespedes wasn't an All-Star, but he won the home run derby. Bryce Harper ended up making the finals, hitting 8-8-8 eight, eight, eight in three rounds. 
And also, Rivera, his last time playing in the All-Star game, he's retiring in the offseason. Let me tell you, it was great to see him pitch, but it would have been better if he pitched in the ninth inning. But I wouldn't blame Jim Leland. He was expecting it to not go so well when it came to, uh, you know, the final inning because he wasn't expecting Joe Nathan to keep the game under control. And the game could have blown out of proportion and it could have been won by the National League instead of the American League. But anyway, one more thing to mention, Yasiel Puig. He wasn't an All-Star. Most of the picks I had for the American League made the All-Star game. As a matter of fact, both my starters were correct for the All-Star game. Matt Harford for the National League and, you know, Max Scherzer going on for the American League. Both of those were correct. National League, I wasn't even close with almost every single pick. And let me tell you, I didn't even get the bench right. Like, Marlon Burr wasn't on the bench. You also had David Wright there, of course. And... I was basically wrong in almost every single pick from the National League, except for starting pitcher David Wright and a couple other players. But as this is going on, speaking of Yazio Puig, he didn't make the All-Star game as expected. His arrogance kind of cost him in votes, and fans didn't want to see him in the All-Star game, even though he's one of the best players right now, leading the Dodgers into a huge race right now for the NL West. Right now, he could have been an All-Star, but he only played a month. I know. He only played a month. It would have been nice to see him in the All-Star game just to say, oh look, this guy can play just as good as Bryce Harper or, or just as good as, um, good as Mike Trout or anything like that in their first seasons. But anyway, let me tell you, he's even being sued right now. If you guys didn't see that, right now, uh, I forget the guy's name or anything like that. This guy is supposed to be suing him right now from Cuba that says that Yes, he Puig and his mother testified against him getting him out of Cuba into the United States by the four, by basically sending him to jail for seven years and basically it's for $7.8 million. Yeah, that guy's a little bit of a scumbag in my opinion because he just wants money and everybody wants money these days. The, be the more better the player is, the more money a person wants because people, when you think about it, only care about you if you're good at something or they see dollar signs. That's all they care about. Money and success. If you don't have any of those, you're nobody. You just have a couple friends here and there that actually like you and the rest is all, oh, you're poor. Fuck you. No, no offense with the swearing, but that's basically what people are saying in their heads. They like to have people that they know that are rich that they can mooch off, or success they can mooch off, or friends that they can help them in life. Like, for example, let's say you're a college football QB, and you're the star for, I'd say, your high school football team. And let me tell you something. If you were to, I'd say, have something like in Friday Night Lights, where you break your neck and you're paralyzed from, ne from the neck down, let me tell you, your friends are going to leave you. Just like the character in Finding It Late. And I forget the guy's name because I haven't watched the show in over a year. Let me tell you, that can happen to people right now. And you can get sued or something like that. But let's get back onto the gameplay. We're finishing off this episode right now. Spring training was basically a wash. We struggled. Our best drill was swing timing. I didn't want to show you guys much of this because, you know, all it was was... Pitches down the center of the plate. You're not allowed to take strikes. And all you can do is, uh, you know, cream home runs over the billboards in left center, right center field for some easy power. Like, he went plus three contact, plus 24 power, and just one drill. That's how easy it was. Now we go into the last couple of pinch in the opportunities for Oscar Bryant. He's hitting three of 16 and with a 187 batting average. Not that good. And it will drop even more to 3 and 17. He strikes out there. Now taking on the Cleveland Indians. Top of the eighth, 3 2 count. Yeah, another strikeout. 3 of 18. And one last at bat in the spring train against the Kansas City Royals. This one's going to be hit down the right field line and loops in for a single. And yeah, that will move the man to third base. And Oscar Bryant pretty much was a wash in spring training. And like I mentioned, it looks like he's making the majors. And yes, he's making the majors. 
Spring training is over, and they're not bringing back down to to Triple A, which means he'll be officially a player off the bench in the majors. This one I'll wrap up this episode of Spring Training. It was basically a random commentary with whatever was on my mind and that kind of stuff. Because what do you talk about in Spring Training? It's Spring Training. You can't talk about the gameplay that much because you guys probably don't even give a shit about Spring Training. Anyway, thanks for watching. Leave a like, comment, and subscribe, and have a great day.